You are watching Econoom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. This episode is about Chapter 7, Demand, Supply and Prices. This is part one of four and we will be looking at the individual demand curve. You will recall that in our circular flow of economic activity, households have wants and needs for goods and services. They want to consume these goods and services to maximize utility. However, they are the owners of factors of production, and this needs to be sold to the firms on the market of the factors of production. The firms then use the different factors of production to produce goods and services, and the households use the wages, rents, interest, and profits that they receive for their factors of production to buy the goods and services. So this chapter looks at demand for and supply of goods and services. We are now busy with microeconomics. We've also said that there's a difference between wants or needs and demand. Demand is defined as the quantity of a product that prospective buyers want to buy and can afford to buy. It is thus not only about needing something, but also about having the money to buy it. We will examine the individual's demand and then the market demand. Individual demand refers to the demand of a single consumer for a specific product. In the textbook example, it's about Ann Smith's demand for tomatoes. So what, would so you, what do you, you think determines the quantity of tomatoes that Ann buys in a week? The most important determinant is the price of the product. The law of demand describes the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. Typically, when the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. Ceteris paribus. You'll recall that ceteris paribus means everything else remaining constant. So, if everything else is unchanged and only the price of the product decreases, the quantity demanded will increase. We can characterize the relationship between the quantity demanded and the price in two ways. First, with a demand schedule that can be drawn as a demand curve or with an equation. The demand schedule shows the different combinations of prices and quantities demanded at those prices. And you can see that it reflects the law of demand. At high prices, like 5 rands, a small quantity of only 3 units is being demanded. Then at lower prices, if you go down to 3 rands, the quantity demanded increases up to 9. At 1 rand, the quantity demanded is 15. These different combinations of price and quantity demanded can be drawn and graphically illustrated as the demand curve. So all the different combinations together make up the demand curve. On the vertical axis, we have the price of tomatoes in rands per kilogram, and on the horizontal axis, the quantity demanded in kilograms per week. And you can see the different combinations. At 5 rand a kilo, only 2 kilograms are demanded per week, but at 2 rands a kilo, 5 kilograms are demanded. The negative slope of the demand curve indicates that inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded described by the law of demand. As the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. A very important concept to note here is the idea of a movement along the demand curve. If there's a change in the price of the product, this results in a change in the quantity demanded, and this can be described as a movement along the curve. Let's say that the initial price is at 4 rands a kilo and 3 kilos of tomatoes are demanded in a week. Then the price decreases to 2. The result is that the quantity demanded increases to 5 kilos a week. This is a move along the demand curve from point D to point B. Such a movement along the curve can only be caused by a change in the price of the product. So if there's a decrease in the price, the quantity demanded changes and increases in this case. And that results in a move along the curve. It's also possible to depict the demand curve as an equation. You already know that the equation for a straight line is given as follows. 
where y is the vertical axis and x is the horizontal axis. C indicates the intercept of your line and M the slope. In the case of the demand curve, we have price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. In this case, price is expressed as a function of an intercept and a slope and the quantity demanded. The slope can be depicted as the change in price over the change in quantity demanded. Note the negative relationship and the negative sign before the slope coefficient. Again, this reflects the law of demand. As the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. So did we achieve the outcomes of this section? Can you describe individual demand? Can you explain how price is a determinant of demand? And can you draw demand curves from a demand schedule or an equation. Also have a look at chapter 7 in Moor and Furi. There are additional resources available on your fundi and you can answer the quiz questions. Finally, follow at Econoom on Twitter.